Welcome to our time of gathering together this week. I uh, want to thank both David and uh, Sandra for, for um, leading last week. Uh, while I wasn't here, we, Gail and I had a weekend up in the mountains um, with a friend of mine who was, was marrying, getting married, so that was a, a wonderful gift to be able to be away. So thank you very much um, to those. To, to, now, Sandra's not here, I should say, because Sandra has got COVID. So, um, Sandra, we're saying hello. I know when, when Sandra's not able to be in the room, she's watching from wherever she is, she and Roger. So, um, so she's got, yeah, she's, she's, last I heard, she's okay. She's, she's got a fairly mild case, which, which is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, look, just remembering, and, and I, I know a few people are wearing masks again, which I think is probably a smart thing if you're feeling a little nervous, because I know it's, uh, it's, it's, quite, uh, it's becoming quite rampant again in the community, um, in the, the strains, the, the newer strains. So, uh, so if, yes, if you don't, if we have got masks out at the front desk if you want to grab a mask. I would encourage you the, just, just to be careful of, and, and to care for each other. One of the ways to do that will be to, to not shake hands, not to be too close to each other. Um, just, just, let's just do some sensible, going back to doing some sensible things as we meet. Um, You'll uh, notice that we've um, that I've. I, I'm really sorry I wasn't here last week in the sense that because um, George had passed away on the on the Thursday night. So um, uh, I left a little note in news and notes, and I've set up just over where George normally sits. You'll notice I've got his guitar and his hat and a photo just to remind us, and they'll stay in place until the time of his service. And and I know I would would have held this off to announcements, but given I'm already on the on that track. Um, we are going to have a service for George on Monday the 28th of November. And there's a note in News and Notes about what to do about that if you want to contribute or, uh, you know, it'll be held here uh, and then sometime after the service and after um, morning tea we'll head down to Winuna Beach and scatter his ashes. So um, at the moment the 28th is fairly firm. We just need a couple of things to fall into place for that to be totally confirmed. So, my friends, we gather in the presence of the one who calls us to see, to hear, to speak words of hope and to open our hearts in compassion so that we might love and serve in our world where it is lost. Come, let's gather together in worship. Something we do every week is that we acknowledge country. So we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the people of the Dharawal nation. We pay respects to elders past, present and future and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people of this land. Lord, may your work be done in reconciliation and justice. Something that helps us to focus perhaps a little as we gather each week is to light the Christ candle. I'm wondering if there's someone for whom lighting... Judy, thank you. The reason being... This is what Do you want to come... Yeah. Would you like to come up? Yeah. The reason being that this is the story that we're going to be talking about in Jam today. Oh, so. there you go. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus, Jesus in, in our darkness, light the, the way. Well, let's uh, stand together. We're going to sing, You Are Lord.
You may be seated. Let's come to God with our prayers of praise, thanksgiving, invocation. And our prayer this morning has a starting point in Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Lord, in this silence, we stop to give thanks and to marvel at all the wonderful things that you have done, that you are doing, and therefore we know you will do in our world, in our community, in our church, and in our lives. Lord, you are an awesome God. We don't stop to see it and say it enough, but Lord, you are an awesome God. So in this moment, we stop to dwell on your goodness. In this moment, we stopped to dwell in your mercy and grace. In this moment, we stopped to dwell in your words and your way of life. In this moment, we stop to dwell in your faithfulness. In this moment, we stop to dwell in your love. Amidst all the noise, the busyness, the tasks and distractions. Lord, in this moment, we stop to dwell on you. Our God, who is marvellous, and has, does, and will do marvellous things. Might we be aware and awake enough to join in with you doing marvellous things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we do each week, I'm going to invite you, if you are able, to please stand. We're going to pass the peace. (coughs) Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us never grow weary of doing that which is right, living in and for peace with God, ourselves and our neighbours. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. I invite you to pass the peace from where you are. Peace be with you.
And those that are going out for jam are heading out now. <laughs> and Dawn's going to bring us our reading for this morning. Thank you, Dawn. Good morning. Today the reading comes from Luke 21, verses 5 to 19. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear with hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defence in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dawn. Great words of hope this morning, aren't they? Hey? We're coming close to the end. In fact, this is the second last week in our um, Christian calendar year. Uh, and this is, this is the, the, um, the second last reading we have from Luke. Um, and it's an interesting place to almost finish. I rather suspect... There have been many, well I know there have been many times and I've encountered a number of people in my, my walk as a person, as a, a minister, as a Christian, many people who have tried to tell me we're in end times and it's all about to happen and Jesus is going to return and there's going to be some violent and bloody overthrow and uh, you know, the way of the world will be gone and... Um, it, 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 the end times is, is a, um, an interesting and, and often a fixated topic for some people. There's no doubt, though, that we are in difficult times. And I rather suspect that, that at most times in our history there would be people who would say we're in difficult times. Uh, there are a number of things in today's passage which, which would be easy to point to for me to put the fear of God into you that we're either in difficult times or end times and now's the time to turn around and, uh, you know, if I was a good minister, that's what I'd do. But I'm not a good minister. I don't like using fear or guilt. Um, I, I, there's a number of things, though, in today's passage which, which point us, that, that resonate for us. Nations rising against nations. And, and gosh, aren't we seeing that happening pointlessly at the moment? War, um, earthquakes, famine, 
the word plagues, oh gosh, haven't we just kind of, <laughs> that should have resonated in one way or another for all of us. Pestilence, yes. Signs from the heavens, well we had a red moon this week. And imagine, and imagine if, if um, you're going back 2,000 years ago, I don't, I'm for sure that wouldn't have been the first time there's been a red moon, but uh, imagine if you're going back 2,000 years ago and didn't understand the heavens the way we do now. Uh, gosh, a red moon would have scared the life out of you, wouldn't it? But there are a number of other systems that are currently under stress, that are currently in some ways falling down around us a bit at the moment. Um, I, I don't know enough about this to talk too much on it, but I was, had a, half an ear on the news yesterday to hear that some massive big cryptocurrency c- company went into bankruptcy. Um, and I know there'll be a number of people, you know, there's a whole range of things like that. We, I, I, I mean, people talk about, the, the, talking about financial systems, I mean, people talk about the Great Wall Street crash of the 30s. But I mean, I've been through two kind of what, what they call, well, maybe even three sort of massive crashes in my lifetime now, and, and they seem to be coming more quickly and, and, and with very quite devastating effects. Um, uh, our environment, the earth, is screaming at us, help. Uh, we could add to, to famine and plagues, we could easily add firestorms, flood, you know, rain events that, that, that have never been, even if it's not flood, it's, you know, like the rain in to amounts that are devastating. I, I mean, Mother Earth is, is crying to us. And I rather suspect for Jesus to have said the same things, so to say the same, say the things that he's, that he's quoted as saying in the book of Luke, he too would have lived through some difficult times to do with environment, to do with finances, to do with social structure, to do with um, plagues, health, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm trying to say here is that there have been difficult times right through time. Jesus' time, our time, there's always been times of instability. And it would be easy to point to those signs and say the end is nigh. But when, if, you, if you notice in the passage, when Jesus is asked about what will the signs be, he actually avoids the question. He goes on to say, there's going to be people who are going to come in my name and are going to be able to, going to talk with some sort of certainty about things. Well, don't listen to them. I'm listening to that. I've got to cycle. I've got to cycle home today. So <laughs> I'm listening to that. <laughs> And I think probably there are a number of different responses that go on in our world. And I've heard it, it's, I mean, Christians have it, we have our own kind of different responses. People of faith have our own little different responses to difficult times, to life circumstances. And I mean, back in the 1930s, since the 1930s, we sort of lived with this um, fight or flight response. You either have a fight or flight response. And, and I actually want to add a bit to that because I think there's, there's I, I've always, I, for quite a while, I kind of thought that the flight response was to run away and the fight re- response was to put your fists up. But I don't hear Jesus saying either of those things in what, we, what he says today when you are facing difficult times. It's not a time for fists. It's also not a time for running away. It's not a time for burying our head in the sand. The different kind of responses, I want to throw a couple of other ones at us. We, we live in a world where a lot of people are ignoring. For their own, sometimes it's for their own, um, uh, for their own benefit or their own um, selfish interest, just ignore the signs about how bad things are for others or for the earth. Business as usual. There's a great song that I really love um, by a a musician by the name of Mose Allen and it's covered by Elvis Costello and the song's called Everybody's Crying Mercy. And in it is this line that says, um, everybody's crying mercy just as long as there's business first. 
and we keep going down that pathway where business runs our lives and government kowtow to business. Nothing to see here. I tell this story. Um, when I was about 18, 19, I inherited my father's work car. Um, it was a little Corolla panel van. He, was, he used to do mobile car tuning and I inherited his work van. And, um, and so I, I used to drive the vehicle around. And I was 18, 19, I gave it a bit of a thrashing. I really didn't care too much about the vehicle. My father being a motor mechanic every so often would, um, would, would service the car. And I remember him saying to me once that, um, oh, look, I don't even know what it was. It was, you know, the Johnson rod or the, uh, there is no Johnson rod in the car just in case. Or maybe it was the rotating disconfibulary upright belt. I don't know. There was something in the car that I'd done a fair bit of damage to and I'd just been ignoring, you know what I mean? Like I'd just been driving probably a little too fast and a little too, I'm not, I'm not advocating for that. I'm not defending it. I was driving a little too fast, a little too quick around the corners. Um, there's a story in my family which I've only just started to tell because I think I've got a moratorium on, uh, on, on uh, confession that I once drove over a silent cop and put a, a massive big dent in, the, in the, the, um, the sump, the oil sump. And, anyway, and, and my dad saying to me, you know, kind of like, how did that happen when he was under the car? And I said, oh, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I remember. Um, um, but anyway, so there's this massive noise coming from the car, probably, I don't know, and Dad's saying to me, why haven't you spoken to me about this, this thing going in the car? It's making this, this noise. And, and I think I might, my joking response, which went down like a lead balloon, was, oh, look, I just turned the radio up. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. And that's how we're living life, a lot of us. We've got the radio turned up. The car's a mess but we've got the radio turned up. It's going to be okay, Jack. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Fun, sorry? Until the, wheels fall until the wheels fall off, until you come to a grinding halt. That's right. Look, I think there's another way as well of dealing with this. And this is what I would, I, I, when I read Jesus, this is, this is the way I would suggest that it comes out of today's passage to some extent. And I'm gathering a few things that Jesus has said, but there is a couple of lines in what Jesus says today, which always draw me to this response in difficult times. Not just difficult times for me personally, but if you are having difficult times personally, this might, might, might hold for you as well. But when we're in difficult times as a community, as a church, as a world, what I hear from Jesus today is this idea of endurance which I take to mean when it comes out of Jesus' mouth, something along the lines of confronting and resisting. Which is not put your fists up, it's actually put your arms out. That's what I hear Jesus calling us to today. It's what I hear Jesus calling his followers to 2,000 years ago. This sense of life will be difficult, life will be tough. You are not going to be off, able to offer much if your voice becomes a loud screaming horn, air horn, or a clanging gong, as Paul put it. You're not going to be able to offer much into difficult times if you panic. You're not going to be off, able to offer much into difficult times if you react in anger, in frustration, you're not going to be off, able to offer much into difficult times if in the face of other people's struggle, all you can do is scream or cry or yell. Jesus offers us this pathway in the midst of difficulty and uncertainty and turmoil and pain is to endure. to resist, to confront. If I could find other words for it, I'd say to hold firm, find your anchor points. Know what you're here for and stay true to that. Now many people don't really know what they're here for because we've been listening to the voice of business and we, we've learned, or beauty, or we've learned to measure who we are based on how good looking we are or how fit we are 
or we've learned to measure ourselves by how much we can, can buy and consume or sell. We've learned to measure ourselves by how we compete with somebody else. We've learned to try and find our place in life by how we compare to others. I think Jesus always knew that Christianity was going to be a small, resilient movement on the edges for those who chose to follow, take, take that pathway. Our voice is always going to be different. But we have to still hold firm to it because it's a countercultural word, the word we share. The people we are called to be stand firm and, and is countercultural to the way of our world. Know your anchor points. Now, Jesus talks about in this passage today that what we're going to have in times, difficult times, words and wisdom. It feels a bit like reaching into the cornflakes pack for the, for the, for the, um, for the prize. You know, you know when you used to get a, get a toy or something in your cornflakes pack and what you pull out is words and wisdom. Woohoo, fantastic. What on earth does that mean? I think what Jesus is trying to say here to us is in the midst of all that's difficult, either for yourself or if you've got the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to follow for those for whom life is difficult and if you're prepared to stand up on behalf of others, what Jesus is saying here is, is that in times of difficulty, your anchor points will give you the words. Your anchor points will help you to to take the wisdom. Now, remember, wisdom isn't just about how... It's not about how smart you are. Wisdom is is how you apply the knowledge you've learnt from your experience. Can we be a calm but firm and courageous voice in the midst of the turmoil of our world? And if so, what does that voice sound like? What are our anchor points? Whenever we find ourselves in an argument, whenever we find ourselves watching greed take over, whenever we see ourselves, find ourselves in places where where people are lost, what are our anchor points? What do we come back to? Now, I can share with you my set. You do quite regularly, actually, so you're probably getting tired of them. I'm sorry if that's the case, but, 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 but I really do think these, these are, are ways. These, this is kind of wisdom in the midst. This is the wisdom of Jesus to us. That finding our way of love when the world is, world is in turmoil. Actually listening to the compassion in our hearts And acting from that space is wisdom. Generosity is another anchor point of the faith. Being open to the idea that we're not the the highest unit in the universe is so countercultural these days but actually recognising that we're part of something bigger is a countercultural thing. Grace, mercy, inclusion, these are all anchor points. Gratitude, justice for the earth, for people. Forming community when people are being isolated off singled out is a countercultural and yet I think rather a, a, a way of resisting the way of our world, the way of enduring, the way almost to flourish when everything else around us is falling apart. So friends, we're heading into Christmas which is more of a time of hope. And gosh, don't we need a little bit of hope. And that'll be the messages over the, over the coming weeks. But today, I want us to remember 
that in these difficult times, Jesus is calling us to resist and to endure. To resist becoming another panic-driven, panic-filled voice, to not being a voice that, that, that screams guilt or fear or scarcity, We're being called to resist the world as it is. I was having this conversation with Wenchin a couple of weeks ago after one of my sermons about, about how do we turn, how do we, I mean, how do we turn the river around? And I, and I pointed out to him there's a great song, again by one of my favourite artists, Elvis, Elvis Costello, a song called What Do We Have to Do to Turn the River in Reverse? And in many ways, the reality is we won't turn the river in reverse. It's a flood. But if we're people of the faith, we don't go with the flood. We don't go with the rushing stream going in one direction, sending us all off into a, you know, a, a difficult times, more difficult times. We're turned to call and face and resist. And that's what I hear Jesus saying to us today, resist. Resist the world the way that the world is. Don't turn your radio up to the point you can't see or hear. Stop and turn and resist the flood coming our way. Know your anchor points in the faith. Like I'm using, that you might want more spiritual language around it than I use. What, what, are, your, what are your values? What are your theological values? Who do you understand God to be that you want to live out in the world? What are your Christian ethics? How, what, what, what is it you want to do? Your Christ, what are your Christian morals that you want to live out in the face of difficult times? Think about those, because that's your way of resistance. It's your way of enduring. Be who you are called to be as God's person, as God's people, as God's church. Be who we are called to be. When everything else around us is difficult, be who we're called to be, which is God's people of love in the world. Let's not ever give up on that. That's our way of resistance. It's our way of endurance. It's the way, as Jesus says in the, today's passage, it's the way you find your soul. It's the way you find your soul. Amen. We're going to sing. We're going to sing a hymn, um, Guide Me Over, Thou Great Jehovah. I think we're singing all the thousand and these and everything as well. So, uh, so please, let's join together and stand and sing. This is a song of strength through the ages. So let's, um, let's stand together and sing.
Yeah. What, at our pre-worship meeting, Brad, what did we decide? I'm going to leave with a couple of announcements first. Then I'm handing over. Then I'm handing over to Brad. I can't even remember from 30 minutes ago what we decided. There we go. All right. Just very quickly, uh, news and notes. You'll have it with you. I'm just going to make a couple of things that I wanted to speak to in news and notes. I've already mentioned George's uh, funeral. Um, we are going to have a Christmas Day meal, so please read that in news and notes. It's still a few weeks off. But uh, if you, there, there's ways that you can either be involved or to help out if you've got other plans for Christmas Day. Uh, the reason we're kind of running this is because Christmas Day is the hardest day of the year for many people. It's, the, it's a really tough day. I could tell you a number of stories of people I've met for whom Christmas Day was absolutely horrible. So we just want to bring a little bit of love and light on Christmas Day. So if you, um, and, and it doesn't mean to say you have to be having a horrible Christmas Day to join us. All right, please don't, we're not going to sit around the table telling stories of woe. We're going to have some fun on Christmas Day. So if you are able to join us and would like to, you are most welcome to. If you're able to volunteer either on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day to help with set up, clean up, um, preparing food, you're most welcome. Um, please let me know. I'll let Mark Burns know. If you, um, if you know someone, I, at the moment I'm keeping it, we're going to limit it to 30 people just because it's our first one. I just want to have a just want to keep some sort of a lid on it. So I'm not spreading the word out yet, but the word will go out fairly soon into the community that we're, we're having a meal for 30 people. So I probably want to say to you, if you're thinking about it, then please let me know by November the 30th, because on December the 1st, I'm just going to start opening the books for volunteers and for people to come to lunch. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. If you'd like to make a contribution, it's, it's in news and notes as to how you can be involved or what you can contribute. The other thing I just wanted to say very quickly is that I'm actually not here from Tuesday to Thursday this week. I'm on a presbytery retreat at Bundaroo. So if you contact me, I most likely won't get back to you. And please be aware I'm trying to do, you know, um, five days worth of um, catch up and um, thing preparation in about two. So um, if I don't get back to you in a hurry this week, then, you know, I'll get back to you at some point. All right, thank you. I'm going to hand over to Brad. Thanks, Graeme. As always, it's uh, welcome to worship on behalf of our church council and our teams of elders and carers. Our new sheet has been produced for this week. This is the digital version that comes via email. Um, and uh, so for our friends far afield, as always, the invitation is there. Please get in touch with us, admin at coromaluniting.org.au. And this document and others that we will continually begin to uh, offer will be on that link. Um, most of our items in here today are, are fairly routine. I merely need to acknowledge that this Wednesday is our elders meeting. Um, on Wednesday evening, basically hosted here. Um, I'll be posting on online the uh, Zoom address for uh, uh, members who need it and our chairperson may be one of those people who chooses to uh, make use of it uh, on this particular occasion. Um, the following Wednesday is our church council meeting here in this uh, place as well. Um, should anyone need to... Uh, get in touch with the eldership or the council teams with matters of concern. Um, if you could uh, email those through to, in Elder's case, to uh, Sandra Levy, um, to church council, our, our secretary is Mark Darby, but also to Mark Burns in our office. Um, items of concern that you want to bring before the councils of our church, um, please do so, so that we can... Uh, be made aware of those concerns and uh, and take them on. And well, just, yep. sorry, something I just wanted to say: right, the complaints department is uh, open um, is open from 12:47 uh, a.m. to 12:48 a.m. on a on a Saturday morning. And if you want to put a complaint in, then you need to put it in triplicate, signed by your grandparents, um, into the office. Yeah, and it used to be fill the little box here. That's right. Yeah. The, <laughs> No, but uh, serious <laughs> issues, they're yes. the people to make contact with and, uh, uh, and we do want to know so that there are things that uh, we need to be acting upon. Uh, the rest of news and notes I'll leave for people to, um, to, to read up and uh, at this point 
I get to change hats because I'm also the person hosting our prayers of the people or intercessory prayer at the moment. So let's take a moment to come before our God in prayer. Lord God, from your word today comes a challenging description matching our current world. Help us, Father, to hear your spirit's voice and identify your message in the midst of each storm and trial, even from within your church. We uphold in prayer the many crises befalling our world, the people of Ukraine facing problems with food and shelter into winter while claiming back their country. Nations across Africa and Asia facing homelessness and starvation from famine and floods. The wealthy nations of the world, including our own, easily distracted by political squabbles, greed and mismanagement, leaving communities without the basics of food, shelter and health care. We pray for strong leadership and those who act for fairness. Father, we uphold the meetings of world leaders trying to forge solutions on climate management and regional cooperation. Guide their discussions toward fairness, equity and practical problem solving. Lord, we are thankful for our stable systems of government that can be chosen and honoured by election. We pray for guidance in the upcoming elections in Victoria and New South Wales, for clear decisions delivered for community need. Father, we pray for your church and the community in which we live. We ask for your continued guidance upon Graham and the members of the Church Council to recognise your spirit's direction for the work of this congregation, the needs of those we meet, and the way to build meaningful community in this place. We uphold before you those known to us who are sick, alone, grieving, and for those concerned by yet another form of COVID. Protect and strengthen us, we pray, to be your helping hands. These prayers we offer both collectively and silently. In Jesus' name, our Redeemer and strength. Amen. Sorry, just before I pass through to um, the, the, our song, um, just in case there's any confusion, I, I won't be here this week, but Ends Meet is still happening. So, ends, and Sandra's not well, but she, she came down, I think, on Thursday with COVID, so she feels she'll be right for Wednesday. Um, so that's right, isn't it, Jan? You, you'd know? Yeah, okay. So, yes, we think we'll be right for Wednesday, and uh, Mark Burns is going to, to be the person who kind of oversees ends meet on Wednesday. So can I just say, if you're thinking about dropping into ends meet, this would be a good week just to come as a calm presence. Not that ends meet's been going brilliantly, but it'd just be nice to have a couple of extra faces around just in case. This would be a good week for it. All right. Um, prayers of the people. Um, no, we've had prayers. Sorry. Potter's hand. We're going, to, we're going to have the potter's hand. Let's stand together if you're able and sing.
God, we give thanks for your goodness in our lives. We give thanks that you are a generous God. So, Lord, we pray with the gifts that we bring that you will use our money, our time, our lives for your work of love in the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our retiring offering will be taken as you leave today. Look, just something I'm really aware of is, is there a number... You can sit down just for a moment if you like and I'll lead us in the blessing from there because there are some people... There are quite a number of people who aren't well at the moment and I know I've mentioned one or two, but I know Dennis has, has is, had COVID. He's recovering from COVID. And Rosalind, both, right, okay, I, yep. I know Andrew Hunt has spent time this week in hospital. I'm not quite sure what for, but, but Andrew is in hospital. I know Brian Gillette isn't well as well and hasn't been for quite a while. Um, uh, who have I missed? I know there's people that I've missed. Wayne. Wayne, yeah, Wayne's got some sort of virus as well. So, um, um, and Beth Roth, that's right, yeah, I, Beth came to my mind too while I was leading and I just couldn't think about it at the time. So let's just, um, I'm, I'm just offering a moment just for you to sit with your own prayer for those people and then I'll lead us in the final benediction. Okay, my friends. I'm going to lead us in the final benediction as we go. Go forth in peace. Now, sorry, what I was going to lead into this was saying, if you want a, if you want a reminder of resisting, this is it. Go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Honour all people. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help the afflicted. Support the weak. And in so doing, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.